morning, church. Good to see you. There is a famous church in New Jersey. I know what you're thinking, New Jersey. Can anything good come from... I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just... I don't... Are you from New Jersey? Are you? Okay. I love New Jersey. You love New Jersey? Okay. All right. We love New Jersey. You're, you're safe here. It's okay. There, there, you might have heard of this. There is a famous Presbyterian church in a town called Bernard's, New Jersey. Anybody heard of Bernard's? Bernard's? Bernard's, from an expert. Bernard's, New Jersey, like I was saying. Bernard's, New Jersey. And there is a Presbyterian church called Basking Ridge. We have a photo here I want to show you of this famous oak tree, this massive thing. This became a cultural icon. 600 years old. They believe this is an ancient oak tree that was legendary, and it became a a focal point for the town. And they would come, and they would look at it, and, and you could see they're so proud of it, and rightfully so, beautiful oak tree. And then earlier this year, the unthinkable happened. They started to look at it, and it didn't look quite right. And as it got closer, they watched it a little bit more closely, and they couldn't save it, and it died. Oh. But in the midst of the sorrow, when the chainsaws came out, and they had no choice but to cut it down, somebody brought a ray of sunshine and said, wait a minute, didn't we take an acorn from this father tree and take it just three miles down the road and plant it at Union City College? And isn't that tree now 20 feet tall? And they said, yeah. And they said, why don't we get some horticultural experts and a lot of volunteers, raise some money, and let's see if we can do the unthinkable and transplant that tree that is now 20 feet tall, 17 years old now, it's been growing, and move it and see it if it'll take. And they tried it, and it succeeded. And now, in its place of the father tree is a son tree that has grown up and is providing stature and shade, and it is awesome, and everybody loves it, and they're coming to it, and it is a beautiful illustration for us here. This little acorn came from the father tree. And it allowed the next generation to see this beautiful tree and come and take refuge in its shade and marvel at its incredible stature. And the Bible, what's so interesting to me, the Bible often compares people of God to trees, just like that. Whether it's in Psalms or whether it's in Jeremiah or this verse right here in Isaiah 61 that says, They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. One of the most important aspects of us, of having a tree-like faith today, is doing our very best, just like this, to produce acorns of righteousness, offshoots, new growth that continues to grow and flourish, and we pour ourselves into, and we mentor, and we disciple, so that if the Lord tarries, one day the next generation can rise up and take our place. We can hand down our legacy of faith to the next generation. So let me ask, how are you doing with that? Listen to this beautiful verse, Psalm 71. Read it with me. It says, Now also when I am old and gray, O God, do not forsake me, until I declare your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Who are you grooming to take your place in the house of the Lord? Who are you pouring your life into that you can look to and say, that's an acorn. I have invested. I have mentored. I have poured myself. Or do we fall into the very easy trap of merely being bystanders, of merely just showing up? And there's nothing wrong with showing up, but maybe God is calling us to a deeper faith, like these trees that have these incredible roots. Jesus gave this foundational mission to the church. He said, go and make disciples of all nations go. And he issued this great commandment. And I think a lot of times we have good intentions about helping those come and see the Lord and, and know him and come to faith in him. But good intentions are a huge difference than being intentional. This is a massive valley, a chasm between these two. There's a huge difference between good intentions, which is nothing wrong with having them, and being intentional, actually following through. Because one is just wishful thinking. But one makes a difference. What a huge difference we see here, because we're called to be intentional in living out our mission, every one of us. So how you doing with that? 
I love asking these challenging questions periodically and challenging us, not waiting for the end and bring it because our faith depends on leading others to Christ and showing the next generation how to place their faith in him. The very first thing Jesus did, if you look at how he did it, because he's our example, was he met people right where they were. And then he allowed them to follow him. And it's a beautiful thing. We're going to explore this familiar story today where we see Jesus demonstrating just this. Turn with me to Luke 19, and we're going to see a life of a man who, his, it was changed forever. Luke 19, while you pull that up, let me welcome our online campus too. It's good to have you streaming with us today. Luke 19, we're going to read verses 1 through 10, and then we're going to dive in and explore this here. Read with me. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead, and he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately, for I am staying at your house today. So he came down at once, don't miss that, and he welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this, and they were so happy that Jesus had picked Zacchaeus to be the one to host him. Does your Bible not say that? What does yours say? They muttered. They were displeased. Oh, they grumbled. And they gossiped. He can't. He's a sinner. Are you kidding? What? He wouldn't do that. Look at that next verse. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up, and he said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now. I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, this is a big statement, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back double, triple, four times the amount. And Jesus looked at him and he said, today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. I love that. He came to, that, that sums it up, that last sentence. He, he came to seek and save the lost. What a lot is packed in this story. And I think if we grew up in the church or you've heard this all your life, you miss a lot of gold because I did. But as I was preparing that this week and I was looking into this, I want to walk through this and set the historical context because we forget about Jericho. This was an important city in the time of Jesus. It was the hub of all the trade routes that would come in from in, in to, in, in Jerusalem. It was one of those places that everybody wanted to be there. And as Jesus walked into the city, the crowds began to come out. And they made their way, and the whispers started. And they were good whispers. He's coming. There's that guy. Hey, we've heard about this. And some were even whispering that he's more than just a prophet and a, and a magician. Some were actually using the M word. He's, he's the Messiah. The Messiah. The one we talked, Isaiah, are you talking about the Messiah? Yeah, and the crowds lined the streets. And everybody turned out. Everybody wanted to see him. And Zacchaeus was so loved by the people. He was a wealthy tax collector. Let me put this in modern day terms. This is far worse than an IRS agent, okay? This is, and if you work for the IRS, no, no, no pox on your house. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying the way they viewed tax collectors back then, they were the lowest of the low because they were rich. And you know how they got rich? They charged more than Rome required. See, tax collectors back then were empowered by Rome, the Roman government, to take the taxes, but they gave them permission to take more than what was required to send to Rome. So they would squeeze the people for their money. And they would say, that's not enough, that's not enough. And he would take this, and he'd say, that's to Rome. And he'd take this handful, and he had permission to put it in his pockets. And it was not illegal. This is how they made a great living. If you could get this job, you wouldn't have any friends, but you would have money. And nobody liked Zacchaeus. Plus, he was just a little nard. So he had that Napoleon complex. And he's like, yeah, you could just picture him. It's like a little scrappy guy coming around. He's like, oh, Zacchaeus. And no one wanted to talk to him. And he didn't have any friends. But you had to pay him a little bit of respect, at least to his face, because he could bilk you for all kinds of money. So Zacchaeus heard about this Jesus character. He's coming. He wanted to see him. He probably wasn't sure what was going on. He was short. He had to climb the tree. Y'all know the story. And Jesus comes walking by, stops, and looks up. I don't think they'd ever met. He says, hey, Zacchaeus, come down. Guess what? I'm inviting myself over for dinner. Does this seem a little odd to anybody else? 
What a beautiful thing. Jesus coming. And Zacchaeus doesn't freak out. Zacchaeus is like, woo, yeah, this is awesome. I got a popular guy coming to my house. This is going to be great. And then suddenly something happens in Zacchaeus' life. And the, ex, uh, the explanation is kind of slim here, but Jesus invites this guy that nobody likes over, and the crowd's reaction is so notable to me. It says they grumbled. They muttered. <laughs> a little pagan, little guy, a little, 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 little tiny squad, a little nerd. I mean, likes this guy. I can't believe he's doing it. And they, got, they didn't go to Jesus. They didn't go to him face to face and say, what are you doing? They whispered and they muttered and they mumbled. Probably sent him a text or something later. Sent him an email or something. You know, don't go to the guy. Just, you know, I'm going to. They muttered and they mumbled and they grumbled. Don't miss this, though. Jesus met him right where he was in this tree. That's where he was. There's so much gold here. I can't wait to show you all this. Through this encounter, Zacchaeus' life was changed forever. And I'm talking changed, dramatically transformed right away. Look at what happened. Zacchaeus' demeanor here wasn't just casual, like, eh, I might repent. Jesus is okay. He declares something that no one asked him to do. He jumps down, whoo, Lord, here and now, I give half my possession to the poor. This guy had a lot. This was a huge statement, but it's what he does next. It's not only that Zacchaeus' life was changed and he's willing to repent and right or wrong, he goes over and tries to immediately change other people's lives for the better. Don't miss this, church. Not only is your life changed when you meet Jesus, you begin to impact those around you because his next statement was, if I have wronged anyone, I will repay them four times. Think about that. This is a big deal. Zacchaeus was likely well-versed in the Jewish Torah. He knew Leviticus. He knew Numbers. Nowhere is restitution required of this level. Restitution could be an eye for an eye, or if I built you out of something, I will pay you back. He didn't double it. He didn't triple it. He says, I'll pay you back four times. Y'all, this is huge. This is not required in the Old Testament. Yet he goes out of his way. From this moment forward, he was radically changed, not only inwardly, but outwardly, which leads us to the second truth for us today. Genuine repentance leads to changed behavior. Wow. I should let that sit there for a minute. Genuine repentance does not allow you to stay the way you were. It leads to changed behavior. You can't just say you're sorry and keep doing the same old, same old and think that's repentance. The church must reclaim its holiness and its saltiness to stand out in this world. It's not easy, but that's the standard. What holy? An inward change and an outward change. And to say, my repentance will change my behavior. Holy Spirit, you have permission to come in, sweep this room clean, take mastery over me. Let me be a slave to you and you alone. That is radical. And apparently Zacchaeus has this incredible change, and he starts living and behaving immediately like a follower of Christ. That should give you hope. I love this story. You know why? Because it tells us flat out that every one of us is somewhere on a journey with God, and there's hope. If there's hope for a sinner like Zacchaeus, there's hope for us. And there's hope for that person at work that you grumble about. There's hope for that classmate, that person in the youth group. That, man, when they come, it just changes the, dy the dynamic of everything because they're so lost and icky and pagan and crude and lost. They're just lost. And it's like, God, use me. <laughs> use me. I, I want to win the world for you, and I want you to use me as a tool in your hands. God, send me. Do whatever it takes. You have complete control. I love you. You love me. We are the world. Use me, Lord. What? What's that? Oh, you want me to talk to that guy? No, no. I meant everybody, everybody else, but, but not that guy. God, when I said you could use me, I wasn't talking about the smelly guy who disrupts a lot and this guy who's so icky and so, right? Yeah. Yeah, we laugh because it's easier to laugh. <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable. That's what we do. God, I will do anything. I am sold out to you. I've knelt at the altar. I've prayed about this. My neighbor? Oh, come on. Not, I meant anyone but him. And that's what we do. We don't say that, obviously, with our lips. But our actions give us away. Even a sinner like Zacchaeus. 
The good news is we are supposed to follow his example. And Jesus looked past all of his stinky, all of his icky, all of his pagan, all of his lostness. And he said, I'm going to dine with you. In fact, you're not coming with me. I'm going to your house. I'm going to invade your world. Zacchaeus didn't say, oh, no, 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 no. Come on in. While you're at it, I'm giving everything away. <laughs> and it's this amazing moment. And we focus on Zacchaeus and we think, okay, well, I'm like him. I want to have good intentions. But there was something intentional about what Jesus did. He stopped in his path. He was on the road. And he said, Napoleon, come down here. I want to talk. I'm coming to your house. It would have been very easy to walk right past him. Right? Most of us, we focus on Zacchaeus in this story. You know what we forget? We forget the tree. There's such gold right here, guys. This tree, I'm, you probably didn't give much thought to it, but I did. Because when I was preparing this, I was reminded of a story of my childhood. It's a story I have never shared publicly. And I thought I never would until today because it's that embarrassing. And it's one of those stories that has such gold in it because it is exactly what happened here. I remember growing up in Titusville, Florida, before we moved to D.C. and then before we moved to Alabama, God's country, amen, roll tide. Before we moved to the real country, I was stuck in Florida for nine years. Hot. It is so hot there, y'all. I got three fans on me. I would have to have 75 fans on me everywhere I went in Florida. It is so muggy, and there are mosquitoes the size of pterodactyls, and it is a brutal place. But God had me there for a reason. And this is one of those things, I look back as a child, and I had two older brothers, Tim, my middle brother, and Jeff, and they were a few years older, so I really looked up to them. And I remember people saying, and what do you want to be, little Jeffy, when you grow up? And without missing a beat, he knew what he wanted. He wanted to fly. He wanted to fly so bad. He wanted to be a pilot. And guess what? He grew up and joined the Air Force and had an incredible career and recently retired. Awesome. And he did it. Then what do you want to be, little Timmy? Well, Tim, my middle brother, was great with people, and he wanted to sell stuff, and he was so good at it. And guess what? He went on to be a realtor and has a huge, thriving business in Birmingham. Little Matt, I, I, I wanted to be a tree. <laughs> True story. You can ask it. My brothers, they knew what they wanted to be. Jeff wanted to be a pilot, and he went off. To, my brother, Tim, he was so good at selling things. True story. Me and my older brother, Jeff, we would be walking through the house one day, and we're starting to miss some of our favorite stuff. My comic books, some of my favorite toys. Where's my He-Man action figure? Couldn't find stuff. And we noticed Tim's door was shut. We thought, this is strange. And then we go and knock. And he'd open it up, and he would say, you can't come in yet. The store's not ready. And he'd shut the door. What was that? I'd look at Jeff for wisdom, and he'd say, something's going on in there. And then Tim would open the door. He goes, two minutes, two minutes, and the store will be open. You don't want to miss this. And he'd shut the door. Well, suddenly, I'm pretty interested. And Jeff's interested. It was like a countdown clock. And when that door opened, we walked in, and Tim had made his bed. And on top of his bed were all kinds of incredible things. And they all had for sale signs. They would be like this great comic book for 50 cents. And over here would be some Star Wars action figures, a dollar apiece. And I was like, these are fantastic prices. This is great. And me and Jeff were like, hey, I've been looking. He was selling our stuff back to us. <laughs> Y'all, that's not the bad part. We paid for it. <laughs> we willingly said, that's a good 50 cent. I'll be right back. And I go down, I get my piggy bank. I would shake it. I would come back. And I'm like, how much? How much for the, the Batman comic book? 50 cents? That's a bargain. Can I have that? I'm like, this is awesome. Y'all, he was so good. He could sell whale hamburgers to Greenpeace. He was that gifted. He could sell ice to Eskimos, and they would thank him. He was so good at this. So everybody wanted to follow them, and I did too. But all I had in me when people asked me was, I want to be a tree. And I would go and stand in the front yard, spread my fingers, and try to sprout. I would plant my feet. I would stand there. I don't know how long, but you can ask my brothers. They'd come up and go, what in the world are you doing? And I would say, without missing a beat, I want to be a tree. That sounds like a, a funny story, but there is a reason why I tell that story. Do we have that picture of me in the front yard? Do we have that one? We, okay, there it is. That's, that's, not, that's not it. Let me show you the next one. I found a rare photo, a real photo of my house growing up, and this is the tree. I think you got it right here. This is the day after Hurricane David came through 
1979. And these were my neighbor's yard. This is my house right here. This is where I grew up. And I wanted to be that tree right there, that giant, I don't know if it's a maple or an oak or what it is, but I wanted to be that tree. And I remember watching my dad come out with a chainsaw. And I said, what are you doing with that? Son, the tree is dying. No, it's not. I'll push it back up. We can make, we can make this work. And sure enough, the ground was so saturated, it began to fall and fall and fall. And there was nothing to do but to cut it down. And then my dream died. I could no longer become that tree. But there is a hidden truth here. Think about what Zacchaeus did. That sycamore tree was important because it gave Zacchaeus a chance to see Jesus. Think about this. I want to ask a very powerful question for us today. How can you be a sycamore tree this week? In other words, how can you help people see Jesus? Because that's what Zacchaeus used to see Jesus. We can be the sycamore tree. And if you're not sure how to do that, I'm going to give you a perfect example to do it. You saw a video this morning as we started this. In just a few short weeks, four short Sundays from now, our church is going to be uniting with 30,000-plus other churches in America for a national movement where we call America back to church, where we literally invite our country back to the Lord. And it's going to take all of us to go into the neighborhoods, to invite people, to do it. It is a national movement. It's been going on for several years. We weren't able to participate last year because our fall was booked. But when I found out about this, this tugged at me, and we are going to join. It is going to be a special day in the life of not only our church, but the church, Big C and Little C Church, across the country. September 17th is going to be an awesome day. There is going to be excitement in the air. The, the rooms are going to be packed. We're going to have decorations and silver blue balloons for the kids and free donuts, a continental breakfast waiting for you in the lobby, and all that great stuff. For everybody who visits, they get the gift bag and all that stuff that's great. But most importantly, they're going to hear the gospel. And I am going to present the gospel. And I am going to share the good news. And we are going to give them an opportunity to hear, unfiltered, why the church is important and why you need the Lord. And we're going to do it in a very bold way, but it's not going to be offensive. It's not going to be one of those things where I'm hitting them on the head with a Bible. But this is, you don't want to miss this weekend. This is your chance to be a sycamore tree for somebody, that coworker, that neighbor, that classmate, that, that spouse, that child, whoever you know, that, that neighbor who needs to see Jesus, bring them here. Now, if you're serious about this, for those who are serious about the call of God saying, go and make disciples, I have a prayer that I want us to pray as a church. It's one sentence. And I want us to commit to praying this simple prayer. And here is the prayer. It says, Lord, open my eyes and help me see who needs me to be a sycamore tree in their life right now? So that's your challenge, part one. Challenge part one is to commit to pray this prayer for 30 days. You have 27 days before that day happens. If you will commit to pray this prayer for the next four weeks until September 17th, then you can take part one of this challenge. This is going to be a powerful, awesome privilege to be used by God. Now, I must issue you a warning. As your friend, as your pastor, do not pray this prayer lightly. You know why? Because when you pray a prayer like that, God hears that and God honors prayers, especially ones that honor him. And when you talk to the Father and say, help me use me to, to show other people how to get to your son, don't you think that he does not hear that? And he, lights, he delights when we pray according to his will. He loves that. And God is going to come through. He will provide open doors and open eyes, and you will see things. And it is going to be exciting because God is faithful. Now think about this. this. This is amazing. Long before Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus, that tree was already planted. Think about that. Long before Zacchaeus didn't even know he couldn't see Jesus, that tree was there to meet his need. That's amazing. I saw this on Jennifer Forrest's Facebook wall weeks ago. She didn't know I was be, be preaching on this this day, but God did. And I did. 
And that is such a mind grenade. It is perfect. Now, many of you, as you've been thinking about that prayer, probably already have at least one name that has raced through your mind. Or God has laid somebody on your heart. Maybe more than one, but you probably have someone in your life right now that you know needs the Lord that is living in heartache, that is living in sin. Maybe they're living in open rebellion, or maybe they're angry with God. And maybe the stuff that's gone on in their world, frankly, you don't blame them. And they need to be released from those chains, that bitterness. And you know the place that they can hear the truth. This is your chance to pray for that person. Now, everybody should have gotten a prayer card on your chair. If you got it, go ahead and grab it. Hold it up. Make sure everybody's got one. You're going to need this. This is your chance. If you will take this part one of the challenge, I want you to write down the name of that person. And if it's confidential, you, don't have, you can use initials or you can just do a first name or whatever. Here's what we're going to do. At the end of church, I would love to pray for these. And I would like just to put them face down in the treasure chest, okay? If you need more time, take them with you and pray for somebody. You can bring them back Wednesday night when we start refuel again, or you can bring them back next Sunday. But if you know who they are, if you'll put them in there, I want to pray for them and the staff. We will start praying with you for them today, okay? Because prayer unleashes the power of heaven. When these prayers go along with what the Father already wants to do, he will put someone on your heart. So if you'll do that and just drop them by, that'll be awesome. Now, if you'll commit to pray for that one person, I invite you to part two of the challenge. And this is where it gets really intentional, okay? Really intentional. Will you commit to invite that person to September 17th? Will you commit to do that? If so, then you can accept part two of this challenge. This is being intentional. This is getting out of our comfort zone so somebody who God loves can come and experience the beauty of community. That's what we're, we're trying to do here, a place where they can come and be safe and accepted and invited and encounter the life-transforming power of Jesus. It's a two-part challenge. Who might be the Zacchaeus in your life, and how can you be the sycamore tree this week for the next four weeks? That's what we're doing. We're going to have additional tools available each and every week waiting for you in your chair different ways to invite, different flyers. There's going to be social media graphics. You're going to see a video each week, some humorous ones that you can like and share and post on your wall and invite people. Very non-confrontational, very easygoing stuff. It is going to be a very, we want to make this as easy as possible for you to fulfill the gospel, to go and invite people. So for those who like to serve, for those who like hands-on projects and like to dive in and physically do something and get messy for the Lord, you have an opportunity. You probably saw on your chair a two-sided flyer. Side two is the service Saturday. Here is what we're going to do. When you are inviting a guest to your house, and they've never been, it's a first-time guest, and your house is a little messy, what do you do to your house? Yes, you got it. You spruce it up with a little frou-frou and things or whatever it is we do to our houses. We have a chance. What we're going to do is try to put our best foot forward here because we want to be ready to receive our guests with the best hearts, prayed up, and also our facility being as clean and as ready as we can to offer. We're not going to spend a lot of money because, frankly, I don't know how much longer God will have us in this. I wanted to share some big updates with you a couple weeks ago, but the people asked for a little bit more time. And in the meantime, God has looked at the vision that the leadership had laid out, and he did this. You're thinking too small. And I said, what's that? And God said, your vision is cute, but it's too small. <laughs> okay, how about this? And he said, you're still thinking too small. And there has been some things come up in the last two weeks that totally changed what I was preparing to tell you. So I'm not trying to tease you. I beg you for patience. Keep praying. There is some great things that are happening that are so much beyond what I was anticipating. I want to make sure I have all of my facts in line and ready before I present it to you. So I'm not just dribbling it out. I don't want to tease you in any way. Just know that, okay? We might be here weeks. We might be here months, maybe a year, maybe two. I don't know. But we're going to do just enough to make this place look refreshed because it's been a couple years. And as you've noticed, some things have gotten a little bit deteriorated just through normal use. And that's awesome. I wouldn't have it any other way. So this weekend, we're going to have five separate ministry projects that you can participate in. Five separate ones. And I'm going to walk you through each of them today. What we're going to do is when we come here, some will be easy projects, some will be medium projects, and some will require a little bit of technical assistance or expertise. There is something for every age group. 
and it is going to be awesome. This is how you can plug in and actually hands-on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over here. You probably wonder what those purple stripes are on the wall. I'm going to walk you through this right now. So here's what we've got. On this first one, this is the easiest one. I'm going to walk through all of these, and then you can come and sign up as you bring your prayer cards and put them in the treasure chest, okay? So here's number one. I haven't practiced this. It worked. All right. The folding brigade. This is the easiest one. This is simple. This can be done sitting down. This can be done at a table. We have 500 invitations that have been given to us by the Gideon Society and the Back to Church people that have invitations that come with the gospel story and a little bit of what we're doing, but they're customizable, which will have our date and our time. You can't run a folded one through the copier. So they send these flat. Once we run these through this week, we have 500 of these that need to be folded into a beautiful quad fold booklet. They need to be folded well, very simple. And then we have welcome bags that we want to prepare for each of the guests who come. And we're going to need a lot of welcome bags. And we're going to have flyers that need to be inserted into it. It's not hard work. It just takes time. Maybe you could do that. Maybe you're a younger person or maybe you're a little bit older and you want to participate, but you don't want to be getting up on ladders. Here's your chance, okay? You can fold, you can stuff a bag and help it, and you can pray for each one as you do it, okay? Welcome bags, flyers, invitations. I've got one through five. If more people want to do this, there'll be Sharpies here. Miss Shannon will be here right after church, and we'll gladly write number six and number seven and number eight, and you can sign up right there, okay? This Saturday, it'll be a drop-in, 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock, anytime you want to come by. We're going to have a music plan. Pizza's going to be flowing. The Diet Coke's going to be here. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to have a party while we serve. A little bit harder, but still quite easy. Number two, the chair brigade. Oh, dear Gussie, some of us have made a little mess. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have almost all the chairs that we can find that are clean out. But we have a stack now of about 100 that are back there that have slowly been rotated out because there's been coffee stains on them and other unidentifiable stains. I don't know what people do, but they seem to make a, a witch's brew and rub it in, and it needs to be removed because it's embarrassing. We invite a guest. If they come to, hey, you can sit right here. Hi. They don't need to sit there. we got to clean these things. Some of them just are a simple spray can. Miss Brenda's already got some great stuff that removes upholstery stains. Others will have a little wet dry vac, just a little portable one. If you can help clean coffee stains off of chairs and candle wax from our candlelight services over the years that have dripped on the back, you've probably seen them, even a little bit of paint. Some of our tables need a good scrubbing and a degreasing on them, okay? This is beyond what, like, we're supposed to be doing weekly. This is a good deep cleaning so that we are ready for that. If you can do that, We'll have the chair. You don't have to move the chairs. We'll have the chairs set out for you waiting on you. All you got to do is go by and just make sure they're clean because we're going to need all those chairs. I'm believing that. It's going to be an awesome day. So that's that one. Number three, getting a little harder, the men's room makeover. Oh, yes. Long overdue. We've done the ladies a couple years ago, and it is bright and happy in there, but the men's room is quite scary. It is still original hospital gray, sterile sanitarium gray. And what we're going to do, we need your help because we want to change this over to a ministry place, believe it or not, where they walk in and the first thing they see is, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The whole thing will be redone in a decorated theme of fishers of men. They don't have a shelf, so someone has already gotten this. We need somebody to hang this. This is a whale bookshelf. You do not want me hanging this. Somebody needs to do this the right way. When you go in, I want them to see this, the scripture verses. We've got... All kinds of great stuff that's been given to us with this coat rack that's an oar. There's something here, I don't know, like a fish or something. Some cool stuff, some artwork. Sometimes guys don't need to be one doing this. If you are good at this and you're a lady and you're not sure, if you want to, you can go in the men's room on this day. You can do this. And we need some help. We've also got some great artwork here that's been given to us. Some great stuff. We want, there's all kinds of stuff. So we need help with this in there. And we gotta, it's got to be hung well so that when the guys come in, they have a place to actually put their Bibles and stuff, and it's a, it's a nicer place. So that's a little bit harder. Wall artwork, fishes of men decor, hang the shelf. All right, now moving on up. Maintenance and more. All right, this is where it starts getting a little scary because this could involve ladders. If you've noticed, we've got some ceiling stains. It has leaked, but Jimmy King has donated some new tiles to us, and the leaks have been fixed. Somebody, we need somebody who's willing to get up on a ladder. 
maybe even do a little trimming, most of the tiles pop straight in. And that's easy, but some of them involve cutting. And I don't know how you cut it. I don't know if it's an X-Acto knife or a butter knife or what, but we're going to need somebody who has tools and knows how to shape some tiles to get up and do some of these, some in the rooms back here. We have some light bulbs out in the hall, fluorescent lights. Maybe you can change some of those. That's something that Susan doesn't need to be doing as she's doing weekly cleaning. If you can help with that uh, and more, there's a few other things. We need people who don't mind with the magic erasers. Maybe you can come and spend an hour just going up and down the hallways because we're not going to repaint the hallways. If you can just scrub off some stains, and that would be awesome, very helpful. And the big one, the last one, where we really need some help with, painting. We're not going to paint much but we need to finish what we started. Everybody look at that beautiful lobby. It looks awesome. That's that caramel mocha. And that was the first thing we did when we uh, started together here in 2014. And that's a beautiful, great first impression. But they take a few more steps forward, and it gets back to a hospital. So if you get close to these walls, you will see that they are nicked and scuffed and look as scary because we've been using this. And that's great. I don't want this to be a museum that looks all pretty all the time because that means there's no life happening. I want this to be a hospital where there's new life, and it's messy, and it's crazy, and we've got stuff, and these chairs are getting stacked and moved, and people are putting them into the wall and putting divots in it and other things. That's okay. We're not going to paint the whole thing. We want to bring that caramel mocha in at this stripe that you see this two-tone, this bottom half, just around here and here. We have one day to get it done. One day, Saturday. The following weekend is Labor Day. Weekend after that is the week before the big national day, so we're running out of time. I don't want to leave everything for the final week, so that's why we're getting a jump on it. If you can tape and you can't paint, we need you. We've got to tape off this line so it looks nice. We've got to tape above this carpet. If you can have a drop cloth, you've got an extra one. We'll try to have all the paint waiting for you. All the rollers is going to be awesome. Those windows, if you're good with windows, they need help. There's a few old leaks, and you can look close. It looks like stains and stuff, and it's kind of embarrassing. I don't want our guests to see that. So... If you can help with this, this is some of the options that you have. As soon as I pray, come over here, grab a Sharpie, meet Miss Shannon, and sign up. Please don't think that you got to limit it here. If you see that it's full and you want to do that, you come on. You serve. It's going to be awesome. I'll be here. We'll have the music playing. Diet Coke's going to be flowing. It's going to be a great time. But this is a chance to serve and make an impact just quickly and locally, and it'll be fun together. So I hope you had a nice summer break because it's about to get busy. It's about to get crazy and fun and intentional. So after I pray, bring your cards, place them in the treasure chest, and walk that way and try to find out how you, you don't have to stay the whole time. Maybe you can only stay an hour. Maybe you drop in. It's a come and go thing. It, you don't have to stay the whole time. Come, just be a part of it, and we'll take ownership of this together. All right? Don't forget, before I pray, this Wednesday we start refuel. Did you look at the menu for this? You need to, because Mr. Hayden is going to be cooking and grilling real barbecue chicken and all kinds of stuff, green beans, corn, new potatoes, banana pudding, pound cake. I just gained a pound thinking about it. You don't want to miss this. It starts, and I start teaching a new series this Wednesday called Christian, It's Not What You Think. That's what it's called, and it's a neat series by Andy Stanley, and I think you're going to like it. All right, so I'm going to let you out one minute early. Let me pray for you, pray for your friends, and then we'll dismiss God, I thank you for all that you have offered to us. Thank you for the privilege to be a sycamore tree for somebody. Lord, we do pray that dangerous prayer. We willingly and wholeheartedly want to be all in. God, I pray that you would open our eyes and help us see who uh, we need to be that sycamore tree. Who is it, Lord, that we need to, to be available to invite somebody so they can see you just like Zacchaeus did? Lord, would you burn that person into our mind and our heart even now? And we lay them before your throne. God, I pray that you would keep the enemy away from that person. We pray that you would provide opportunities and you would soften their heart. Even now, they wouldn't even understand what is happening, but that their name has been laid before your throne, and you are already tenderizing them, Lord, so that they can receive the gospel when they hear it. Lord, would you do something awesome? Help us to be intentional this week. Put those people in our paths. Help us as we ramp up back for the fall, Lord. Help us to be obedient and to give us boldness. May we shine bright for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. I love you. You are dismissed. Don't forget your cards. Head over there and sign up if you can be part of service day.